Well, today we're here at the uh, City United Reformed Church in Cardiff uh, to carry out a consultation event uh, with the Government Equality Office on uh, the equal civil marriage legislation proposals. My name is Anna Reid and I work for the Government Equalities Office, which is part of the Home Office. Um, and we, we have a fairly uh, big remit. Um, um, which is outlined in the very small letters there, um, to cover LGBT equality for the UK government. Uh, LGBT <coughs> and other equality issues are reserved to Westminster, so we have a fairly big remit across lots of Westminster departments and across all of the four uh, administrations of the United Kingdom. Uh, we need on the LGB and T issues, um, and part of that is around some of the legislative frameworks like the Equality Act and Civil Partnership Act, and some of that is also in relation to some of the softer policy work that we do um, as part of our remit. Um, we have um, a very good template and a very good um, early commitment from this administration to tackle LGBT equality and we're very proud of the uh, far-reaching uh, government initiatives that we have to deliver on. One of the first things that happened after the general election uh, last year was that the, or the year before it would be, the administration made a very clear commitment that they wanted us to be bold on tackling LGBT equality. And they set us the task of putting together an action plan that would address the whole broad um, range of issues that LGBT people face in their daily lives. Consequently, last March, we published this LGBT action plan. And in it, this action plan covers a range of different issues from education to health and social care issues um, to civil society and to sport so that we can address some of the real fundamental challenges that LGBT people face in their daily lives um, when they experience discrimination. One area that we're covering is crime and justice is, is, is outlined here. It's very important to me and I think to, to, the, to the government to ensure that LGBT people feel comfortable and safe existing in their identity and in their communities in which they live. The notion of family is changing and we are uh, as a community starting to be much more prominent with children and with communities and, and the shape of what we understand as the family is, is definitely um, evolving and I think for the better. And my role and our, the role of government here is to make sure that those services that help us, uh, whether they be education or social services or healthcare services, recognise the role of the modern family. Um, this government has been very clear that it's very much in support of families and that's about supporting families, whatever shapes and sizes they are, whatever denominations they are and whatever genders they are. And I think that's, that's an important message, both in relation to the work we're doing um, on equal civil marriage, but also in terms of giving children stability for whatever family they are in, that they can they can feel that support. I'm, I'm absolutely delighted that our minister is one of the strongest advocates for transgender equality of all ministers I've met across Europe. Um, as a consequence of that, she was very clear that she wanted us to look specifically at some of the issues that transgender people face. Discrimination that is different to the discrimination that LGBT that people face in their daily lives. There is obviously areas where there are wrap-overs, but I think to put LGB and T together in one great group um, really masks some of the real challenges that transgender people face. Marriage law is incredibly old and antiquated as we're learning to our cost. We have um, civil partnerships and we have marriage. Um, civil partnerships were introduced in 2005 um, and whilst at the time it was stressed that they weren't marriage, um, they were designed to give equivalent rights and responsibilities as marriage. Um, there have been over 46,000 civil partnerships since their introduction in 2005 um, and I think the suggestion is we might hit the 50,000 mark if we haven't already uh, this year. Um, and since 2005 there have been subsequent developments. So since December 2011, it's been possible to have a civil partnership registration on religious premises, and that involves the civil partnership registration remains entirely secular, so it doesn't have any religious evidence at all, but it can take place in the religious premises of those that wish to, on an entirely voluntary basis. Having two separate legal provisions for same-sex and opposite-sex couples um, we heard really perpetuates 
a sense of discrimination, it perpetuates a sense that couples are different. Um, there are obviously differences as well between civil partnerships and marriage. You don't have to say four words to um, enter into a civil partnership. You have to say legal form of words to enter into a marriage. Um, and a, a problem that I think is often overlooked um, is that the current system creates problems for those seeking a gender recognition certificate to, to legally change their gender because we don't recognise same-sex marriages. Um, couples who are married but one wants to seek a gender recognition certificate has to legally end that marriage. So, um, the government commitments as laid out in the consultation document really focus on um, widening the eligibility for civil ceremonies for same-sex couples. And that's really the driver behind the whole consultation and that's really the primary focus. So, no changes are being proposed to how religious um, marriage ceremonies are performed. Um, we're proposing to keep civil partnerships for same-sex couples and that also allows us to keep the provision I was talking about earlier about civil partnership registrations on religious premises. Um, we will also be introducing under the consultation a proposal to convert civil partnerships uh, into marriage for, for all couples in civil partnerships. And as I was mentioning earlier, individuals will for the first time be able to legally change their gender and remain married. For those in civil partnerships, they will be able to convert that civil partnership into a marriage if they want to seek a full gender recognition certificate. <laughs> I want to address a couple of things uh, this afternoon. The first one of which is the specific exclusion of religious institutions and places of worship from the consultation. I believe that to be profoundly wrong. The churches themselves have not engaged in the debate and the discussion that they need to be able to do in order to understand the nature of relationships. So, if the nature of marriage is to do with mutual nurture, then it must be addressed as being about that and not merely purely about procreation. The discussion has to widen to an inclusion of heterosexual and same-sex relationships. So, there are a number of things that the church is not engaging with in terms of its response, not just to the consultation, but to the reality of relationships as they are now exercised in enormous number of places in the world. Is it a marriage? If you choose one over the other, why? What would be influencing your choice over one or the other? So, because it's a single system that we want, it's a single equality act, so a single system should apply as well. The idea is that single partnerships, civil marriage, should be open to everyone. Heterosexual, or gay, lesbian, transgender, regardless. If not, you only need one. If they're closing it off to heterosexuals, well then what meaning does it have anymore? It's a two-tier system. It's a second-class system, and it highlights the fact that you're in a same-sex marriage. 
Um, also, as well, which was quite unanimous, is that religious houses should have the opportunity to perform um, marriages if they want to. Because we wanted to touch on the very last question about transgender people having to change, well, of course not. Two people are already married, what needs to change?